tight. Double check again. Triple check. Yeah, just told me to film whatever I can, so I don't know what the fuck he wants. <laughs> he does all the editing. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, setting up the block here for the time insert. We gotta put an alignment pin in here to line up the hole. Then we can cinch down the bolts to hold the plate in place. So we drill collect correctly and straight and square. Tighten those down. Now we can tape off the block, pull our alignment pin out, and do a core core drill. Use a suitable drill motor and drill for the uh, tape off these oil passages so no chips get into the oil. And what is this doing? We are just putting a time insert in this block because it pulled the threads out of the main block. And now we just drill real slowly. And try not to let it grab. He's putting like a metal collar that he's used to be. So pretty much just making the threads for the block. Watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two case hats because they have to match. Oh shit, that's right. Mm -hmm. Like mine, pushing 20, 20 and not have to or broken in some. Oh shit. Yeah, I broke. I destroyed my ring lens on my original engine with like 20 pounds of boost. <laughs> Watch yourself, guys. To tap it, again, you gotta use lubricant. The top's marked for the depth that it needs to run. And just like tapping any hole, you go back and forth very slowly. So you can release all the shavings that are gonna be coming out. Another time consuming process. You wanna remove it, remove your shavings as you go. Yeah, it's crazy. It came out so like so fast. Or, like it, the threads came out of the block as soon as we got it. Essentially, does IAG reuse case halves? No, no. they're very brand new case halves. Yeah. So that's just putting new threads in the block for the yeah. time insert screen too. So yeah, the time insert, the thread inside of the thread, they're timed in coordination. Huh. So you're putting a thread right now, we're putting a thread all the way through. You get that time insert all the way through, you have to start the threads here. Then you stop at the end, which is a little short. Uh -huh. And then when you throw the time insert in, it will flare out when you put the uh, drive tool through. It flares out in the end to keep it held into place. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is not so yeah, here's a bore scope of the drilled out spot. New threads. Yeah, that's all new threads. Fuck yeah. Shit's dope. Fucking boroscope. Fancy. Tired check myself for prostate cancer. Tired check myself for prostate cancer. Sure, if you wanted to, and then I get to lock tight it in with a driver. Yeah. I get this driver all cleaned up. All right, so here is the time cert right here. This is gonna go inside the case half. It's pretty much so. This threads into the new threads that we made, the outside, and the inside threads are what the head stud are actually is gonna screw into. And he said it's gonna like expand as the, you said it expands as the head stud goes in? No, nah, as the driver. Oh, is it? Oh, the okay. driver, at the end of this will expand just the hair to keep it from pulling out. Oh, okay. So the driver puts it in. 
makes it disband and locks it in the block. So when you put the head stud in, it doesn't pull out. A little oil on the driver. Spin this on the driver until it stops. All right, I'm gonna take some time suit 6020 thread locker. Just on the end of this bad boy. <laughs> Let me insert it very carefully. Hit the threads. Screw it in. Once it stops and gets tight, it means it's bottomed out. So now you need to drive the driver through to expand the outside and grab a tool for that. And right, push the driver through till it bottoms out. Come back out. Then I make sure off my core bit drill that this went down the same depth. So it's in the block now? Yep. Dope. Install. Are you checking to see how far it's in there? Or? I want to make sure that I went all the way through the insert oh, so okay. then the air or the head stud can go all the way through. If you don't go all the way through, your head stud won't will sit out further than the others. Oh, okay. Yeah. It won't be able to sit at the, at the base of the block. So then essentially you're not getting all the threads you would have yeah. holding. And it's pretty hard to get the dryer through. A lot of people would think, oh, I'm just fucking stripping it. Yeah. That's why you go back to your market with your core or your reamer bit. Then you know that you, you went through far enough. So it's, it's install's done. Okay, cool. And we can ram the studs back in. We'll clean up all this stuff. Put the studs back in, throw the head gasket on, throw the head on, and then you'll know for sure if the repair is 100%. Now, if you look, all the depths are even. Yeah. So that's how you know that the concert's in there? Yeah, if all it wasn't flared out all the way, this would become tight uh -huh. before it hit before the it was, bottom of the, okay. the, the case. Yeah, it would just stick out. Yeah. Yeah, you just do 30, 60, 90? Yeah, 30, 60, 90. Shit's scary. <laughs> Uh, after 60s, I'm gonna start being Yeah. This is the one with the time into in it. Yeah. 60, nice. good. Yeah, I didn't make it a 30 last time. You need to start on the one that has the time too. Yep. Yeah, we're there. The hell? Not out of the neck of the woods yet. Six. Fuck yeah. Fucking time saving. Boom. Stop that. are on. Yeah, the ink clearances are all on the side. So they had a bunch of these. These ones failed. They now have upgraded to a larger diameter piston. Oh, okay. So um, in the last three years, I've seen at least two or three of these fail. I've had them come in and maybe have slop or they've leaked around the steel. Oh, okay. um, but obviously that's heavier duty. So that's like a stock one now? That's yeah, this are? is the stock ones oh, now, shit. from Gates. Okay. So, all right, so on the Gates timing belt, they make it pretty easy with giving you yellow marks. Um, the dotted line's always gonna go to your crank. We're gonna stop dead center. Um, there are arrows that point the direction of the timing belt. You can't see because it's underneath the tensioner, but most motors run clockwise as the Subaru runs clockwise. But you're gonna run back around and counterclockwise Back to the tensioner, so all your, ten all your looseness goes to the tensioner side. But you got a dotted line for your crank, you follow it up, single line, single line, line those up, again on the left line, 
Make sure these are up to two to two. Same thing around to the other side. You got another line there, line there, line there. And again on the top, line there, line there, and then your two on the bottom. If all those are lined up, you can pull your tension pin. And I suggest every time you do, are doing a timing job to spin it around by hand, two to three revolutions and make sure the valves don't hit. Um, once that has been done, you can slap your timing covers back on and finish your job. No. I'm gonna leave this pin <clears throat> in though. Okay. So you, you can replace the, that, the tensioner. Yeah. I would highly recommend replacing that one out. All right. Um, but so the way it's set up now, you literally, you're just gonna take this off, uh -huh. 12, pull that, pull this. It, it helps to have another person there. Yeah. Hold tension on this and here towards the slack that way, so up and then you can slide the new tensioner in. Okay. And then put that back on, pull your pin. Okay, cool.